Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's talk about quotient modules. So let's take a module R, uh, let's take a ring R and a module M over R, R is uh, M is an R module and N a sub module of M. Okay, now sub module in particular means that it is, is a subgroup of the additive group subgroup of m plus and so we can define the quotient group so recall if i have a group and i have a normal subgroup i can talk about the quotient in this case m is an abelian group so uh, m by n with this addition i can talk about the quotient group and this has uh, is uh, well in fact it's an abelian group And what is the group um, operation? I take cosets. So, firstly, what are elements here? Elements of L look like cosets x plus n, x varying over m. So, this is a space of cosets, set of cosets. And recall addition of cosets is defined like this, or the group operation is x plus n plus y plus n is just x plus y plus n. Okay, and this is for all x and y coming from m. Now, what we claim is that we can do more because m is a module which means I know how to do scalar multiplication and n is a submodule which means it is closed under the scalar multiplication. So, given this additional data, we claim that we can make L into L can be made into an R module. Okay. So, why R? So, let us define the action we have in mind. Let us take a ring element R, let us take a coset x plus n and we will define. So, this is the definition that R acting on x plus n is just R acting on x plus n meaning the coset of Rx and this is for all ring elements, for all elements x in n. Okay, so, that is the definition of the, the scalar multiplication. And what we need to do before we even proceed further to show that it is a ring and so on, it is a module and so on, is we must show that this definition is, is actually well defined. Okay? So, why, why do we need to worry about well defined and, uh, definedness? Because this coset x plus n, I have chosen one particular representative x from this coset, but of course, I could have chosen a different representative. And when I do that, I should ensure that my right hand side, the coset that appears on the right hand side remains the same. Okay? Only then can I claim that this definition makes sense. Okay? It should not depend on the representative that has been chosen. So, here is the first thing. Let us check that this definition is well defined. So, what should we do? So, well definedness means checking the following. Suppose two different representatives, two different elements x and y give rise to the same coset, okay. then we need to check, need to check if the right hand sides that we claim, so R x plus n is the same as R y plus n and this should be true for no matter which ring element I choose. Okay. So, if this happens, then this definition is well defined. Okay? So, let us complete the verification here. So, what does it mean to say that x plus n equals y plus n? Well, this means simply that x minus y is an element of n. Okay? Now, n remember is a submodule. Okay? So, now we use uh, some of the hypotheses. So, n is a submodule means it is closed under scalar multiplication. So, what I can do is I can multiply this element x minus y by the element r. So, scalar multiply it and what I will get must again be an element of n. Okay, We are almost there. So, now we will just use 
uh, what's r acting on x minus y the axioms of uh, modules the second axiom i suppose says that uh, r x r into x minus y is just the same as r acting on x minus r acting on y so this says r x minus r y is an n and of course this just means that the two cosets r x plus n and r y plus n are the same okay so that completes the verification that this definition is actually well defined okay now we'll need to check the r module axioms so you know does this make it into an r module so uh, let me check uh, one of them all the others are are similar so let's check the module axioms so axiom 1 for example so it says that if i take a ring element r and i take the sum of two elements so here the sum of two cosets so i have to verify whether this gives me the same answer as r acting on x plus m plus r acting on y plus m okay so i need to check if these two things are the same so again let's let's just compute each side and see what we get so firstly x plus m plus y plus m this is a sum of two cosets so this by definition so this here i'm just using the definition of addition in the the space l in the abelian group l the addition is just you add x and y and take that plus m now what is r acting on this coset x plus y plus m now this is by the definition of scalar multiplication so this is the definition of addition in my quotient space so this is now by the definition of scalar multiplication when i take r and multiply by this i'm supposed to get r acting on x plus y plus m okay now on the other hand what i have here the right hand side it's r acting on x plus m is just the coset r x plus m so i have to here use the scalar multiplication definition first so this is by the definition of scalar multiplication r into y plus m is just r y plus m and now i use the definition of addition in my quotient space which is i have to add the two representatives together rx plus ry plus m okay and now observe that these are both equal because of the axiom r times x plus y in my module m is the same as rx plus ry plus m okay and so the those two are actually equal okay and all the other axioms are are similar so you should just check all the other axioms okay so i will leave leave that for you to check so what we have managed to do is show that the quotient group m by n is in fact more than just a group it's actually an r module okay now uh, in the case of vector spaces this is uh, it may be a concept that you have encountered in in linear algebra it's usually called the quotient vector space so let me just make a brief remark about that uh, this is sort of a standard example which is if r is actually a field k m and n are well m is an r module in other words m is a vector space so suppose m is a k vector space vector space over k and n is a subspace so if i give you these two things then we usually talk about the quotient vector space m by n okay and this is exactly the notion that we have defined here quotient vector space well how is it defined it's as an abelian group it's just the quotient of the the abelian group m by the normal subgroup n and uh, the the vector space structure is given by allowing scalars to act in exactly the same way that we just defined so if i take a element of k the ground field then i make k act on the coset x plus n by just making it act on the representative x okay so this definition coincides with a definition which you may or may not be familiar with the notion of a quotient vector space okay and uh, this is uh, you know so maybe a, 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 an exercise if you have seen this before if not we'll do it during one of the the problem sessions is the following if m is finite dimensional if m is uh, finite dimensional as a vector space over k then 
in fact so is n any subspace is finite dimensional of course so is the quotient and we have the following nice relationship that the dimension of the quotient as a vector space is the dimension of m minus the dimension of m okay so just try proving this using the definitions if you haven't seen the definition of a quotient space before uh, this involves trying to find a basis an appropriate basis for the quotient vector space okay anyway just uh, something to think about uh, regarding quotients now uh, here's a here is a slightly less trivial example is uh, let's take the ring r to be kx so i'm going to talk about a module over this ring kx and recall that just means i should give you a vector space together with a linear operator okay so let me take my vector space k vector space to be k2 and i should give you a linear operator on this space so let me just give you the linear operator t uh, which does the following so the matrix of t is just so i'll, I'll sort of give you the matrix of t it's 0 1 0 0 in other words if you want to think in terms of basis vectors t takes the first basis vector to 0 and the second basis vector to 1 okay that's what this this 0 1 0 0 means so e1 is the first basis vector 1 0 e2 is the second basis vector 0 1 okay so i given you uh, i have i have fully specified a vector space and an operator so i have fully specified the module structure of um, v as a module over kx okay so what's the module structure here uh, so now remember v is therefore a kx module why are the following definitions the constants the constant polynomials act as follows so if i just give you alpha acting on v it's just the usual scalar multiplication so this is if alpha comes from k this is the constants and then the special polynomial x acts for all v in v according to the what the operator t is okay the action of x is given by the action of is given by the operator t and more or less these two are all you need from this you can figure out how any polynomial acts okay you just have to use higher powers of t okay so we have seen this before so all i want to do is sort of take this particular example of t and work out what this uh, this module looks like in particular this module v has a an obvious sub module so consider the sub module w which is a span of just the first vector e1 alone okay so this is a subspace so when i say span i just mean uh, all scalar multiples with scalars in in k so look at just all multiples c times e1 c coming from k okay so this is a this is a subspace of the vector space v and i claim that in fact it's more it's actually a sub module for the action of kx okay so recall what's a sub module it's just a subspace which is also invariant under the action of t okay so let's check that w is t invariant so note that w is definitely a subspace w is a subspace is clear enough but in fact if i take an element of w and i act t on it so what's an element of w typical element looks like c e1 and if i act t on it well by the definition of t that is just zero so in fact uh, t of w is actually just going to give me the zero subspace so in particular it means that t of w is a subset of w okay that is w is t invariant okay and from our general uh, analysis of what submodules look like this means that w is actually a kx submodule this is a submodule this is a kx submodule of the module v okay so we have found a, a module so uh, just to recall what t does so notice this is what t was doing t of e1 was 0 and t of e2 was sorry it's not 1 here it's e1 t of e2 is e1 okay now uh, let's look at what uh, the quotient looks like so i've 
gotten a submodule w of v so i can consider the quotient space v by w and what does this look like this is all elements of the form uh, v plus w okay v coming from v now let's just calculate the action of uh, kx so by the our general theorem or general construction in some sense the quotient space is also a kx this should be a module right this has a kx module structure the question is what is the what is this kx module structure so a kx module is a vector space together with a linear operator on that vector space so here the vector space is this right the quotient space whatever that is but the question is what's the action of the linear operator that we are talking about and recall the linear operator is nothing but how x acts okay so let's figure out how does this special polynomial x act on an element of v by w so that's my question so let's answer this question how does x the polynomial x act on v by w okay so let's compute so let's take x and try to make it act on uh, a coset v plus w by definition of the action on the quotient space how how does a ring element act on a coset it just acts on the representative so this is just x acting on v so this is x acting on v plus w is just x acting on v plus w okay now recall x acting on v by definition of um, the the operator t x acting on v was just the original operator t acting on the vector v but now what does v look like v is some combination of the vectors e1 and e2 so when i act t on it tv is just uh, well it's c1 times tv te1 te1 was 0 plus c2 times te2 and te2 is e1 okay now i've used the definition of t here i've used the fact that when i apply t to e1 t acting on e1 gives me 0 so this is t e1 is 0 and t acting on e2 gives me e1 so t e2 is e1 so i've used those two properties of t here and what that tells me is that the final answer is just c2 times e1 so when you apply t to v i just get a multiple of e1 okay but notice i am not looking only at tv i need to look at the coset tv plus w so observe my answer here is that x acting on the coset v plus w is t v plus w but that is just c 2 e 1 plus w okay. but remember w itself is all multiples of e 1 right so this this guy actually belongs to w this is just an element of w already in other words this is therefore the same as the 0 coset okay. if I have an element a representative which comes from the subgroup that you are quotienting by then of course that plus w that element plus w is the same as 0 plus w okay in other words this is just the the zero element of the module okay in other words x just acts as zero x uh, kills all the elements of the quotient space okay